So we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're actually going to give CNN credit. Now, it's a little bit difficult for me to do this because I genuinely hate CNN, but nonetheless, credit where it's due. They ran a segment that isn't just positive about Bernie Sanders, but incredibly constructive to boot. Now, what they talked about was how Bernie Sanders surprisingly has a lot of support in areas of the country where you wouldn't necessarily think he would have support. Um, for example, in areas like so-called Trump country, places where Donald Trump disproportionately won in 2016. Now, they did this by profiling the hosts of the Trillbilly Workers' Party podcast, and they explained why in their state, in their area, people actually support Bernie Sanders because he has a message that resonates with them because people in their town believe that healthcare should be a right and a lot of people don't have health care, so they want someone who's actually going to deliver on a policy that politicians often say they want to deliver, but don't. I mean, the Affordable Care Act was a step in the right direction, for example, but affordable health care is something that is really subjective. And now, especially since it's been gutted by Republicans, health care under the ACA isn't that affordable. So the reason why people in Trump country support Bernie Sanders is because they know that he's the real deal. And in spite of worries that he's too far left, they kind of dispel this myth by, you know, making a different type of electability argument that I think people in the, who watch the mainstream media need to hear. Because oftentimes the logic is, well, you know, you can't run someone in a state like Kentucky who's too far left because that's going to turn off moderate voters. But what Democrats have been missing is that you have to get out the vote and make sure that your own base is energized and you get young people out to vote because every single election is basically one big get out the vote campaign. If Democrats fail to get out the vote, the Republican is successful. And that's something that Bernie Sanders realizes and you can see it in the way that he's campaigned, right? So it's about bringing out people and making sure that enough people come out and vote for him. But they're going to explain why Trump country loves Bernie Sanders or at least some places in Trump country Love Bernie Sanders. This was actually really great. Former city councilman just added. Oh, a trio of leftist activists have figured out how to make people listen to them. And is this really where the Democratic Party is? The Trillbilly Workers Party is Tanya Turner, Terrence Ray, and Tom Sexton. Their popular leftist comedy podcast is recorded in a cabin in Whitesburg, a town of 2000 in what, in the popular imagination, is rock solid Trump country. I think some Trump supporters that I know that I would consider as stereotypical Trump voters are completely disassociated and think it's funny. All of these systems that um, have, have screwed us over time and again, yeah, they're like, oh, you know, what's, what else do I have but to laugh at this maniac pushing buttons somewhere? A foreshadowing of the national election. But while they ridicule President Trump, they have contempt for the Democratic Party, which they think has made too many moral compromises to help communities like theirs. Do you think the Democratic Party speaks to the issues facing your community? No, not at all. You could look at a lot of the failures of the Democratic Party, both in Kentucky, um, hyper-locally, but also across the country, um, to lead you to some of the support, of course, of conservatives and bizarre politics like Trump, what Trump has brought about. And because they've really just like abandoned communities that used to support them. What would you say to people in the cities from the coasts who would be surprised that there are Bernie supporting communists, socialists out here in Appalachia? We have the internet. Yeah. It's not good, but we have it and we know about things. If you're a leftist in a big city, you know that there are other leftists out there in places like this. Anywhere where people have a boot to the neck, they're resisting, they're fighting back. The Democratic candidates for president of the United States. They're not impressed by the candidates for president in 2020, except for Bernie Sanders. Hey, we will thank you! Who only lost the 2016 Kentucky Democratic primary to Hillary Clinton by half a percentage point. You know what you're getting. This man has had the same vision for 40, 50 years and has absolutely moved the dialogue about what is possible in this country. I could tell you this. My mother, who I wouldn't, you know, I love her, but I wouldn't consider necessarily a, a 
sort of an exemplar of progressive thought loves Bernie Sanders. <laughs> she's a very overzealous Bernie person. Uh, you know, she's a Pentecostal Sunday school teacher, so. Healthcare is a human right. Medicare for all. The Trillbillies believe Sanders is the only candidate who truly understands the struggles in communities like theirs. Bernie! And trust he would work toward the fairer future they imagine. We are in the unhealthiest congressional district in the country. There's no one here that doesn't support health care for all people. You would have to be a criminal, an absolute billionaire class sociopath to not want the sick and dying people around you in this community and in your family to not have access to quality health care and very few people here do. That is one of the simplest nods I can give to why Bernie has support here. That was absolutely fantastic, and I think that that should be required viewing for every Democratic strategist and Democratic Party politician, because this idea that every election is going to be about winning over a fixed amount of voters that kind of, you know, are in the middle or maybe the center right, those days are gone, right? That is a strategy that is a failure. If you appeal to moderate Republicans and you shift to the right, you lose voters on the left because you abandon them. And every single uh, election between a Republican and a Democrat will be about whether or not that Democrat has been successful enough to, you know, get out the vote, to get new voters registered, to galvanize young people and get them excited about their campaigns. So what they're saying here is actually in Trump country, Bernie Sanders is viable. He can win, and he's making the Democratic Party competitive in areas where they've kind of just ceded that ground to Republicans, right? Because what we see oftentimes, and the 2014 race with Alison Lundergan Grimes versus Mitch McConnell is a great example of this. She ran a campaign as basically a Republican light candidate, and she wouldn't even admit that she voted for Obama in the last election, which obviously, if you're a Democrat, you voted for Obama, right? But, I mean, the problem is that when you run someone who is Republican light, you demoralize your own base, and Republicans who are already going to vote Republican aren't going to, you know, uh, support you just because you're trying to pander to them. They're just going to vote for the real thing. So what we need to do is once and for all acknowledge that anyone making an electability argument who isn't stressing the importance of energizing young voters and registering new voters doesn't know what they're talking about. And I think that this segment really makes that crystal clear. So um, one of them made a phenomenal point. You can look at a lot of the failures of the Democratic Party to lead you to some of the support of conservatives and bizarre politics like Trump because they've really abandoned communities that used to support them. And that's precisely it. If you shift on that ideological spectrum, if you shift to the right, you are abandoning people on the left. But if you shift to the left then you're really throwing red meat to the base, like Donald Trump always does, albeit on the right, but nonetheless, he makes sure that voters in the Republican Party know that they can count on him for right-wing policies. It may be policies that we don't like, but he knows that he's not going to win without his base, and Republicans, by and large, know that. They're never worried about shifting too far to the right, and part of the problem is the media never calls them on it. But there's always this fear that you're going too far to the left, and you're going to lose because independents won't want to support you, except Bernie Sanders is largely viewed as a far-left candidate when he's more of a center-left candidate in actuality in comparison with, like, European politicians. But nonetheless, he actually appeals to independents because he has a message that speaks to normal people. He has demonstrated knowledge of the issues that affect them personally. And one of the hosts said that his mom, who isn't really the stereotypical Bernie bro, loves Bernie Sanders. It's almost like normal people know who actually cares about the issues and which politicians are just in it, you know, for their own careers. Like Pete Buttigieg, who's running for president because he wants power. And another co-host said, we are in the unhealthiest congressional district in the country. There's no one here that doesn't support health care for all people. And polls show that Bernie Sanders is the most trusted when it comes to issues like health care and the economy. People can see through the bullshit for the most part, right? There are times when I've been disappointed in the electorate. Um, I just posted a video where I face palms the entire time at a panel of CNN voters or, or CNN town hall participants or whatever who thought that Amy Klobuchar just dominated that last debate, right? But by and large, I think that most people who are just casual observers can see 
who's fighting for them and who isn't. It's just a matter of they feel as if it's worthwhile enough for them to get out and vote. That's really the true battle here. Now, one thing about Kentucky is Matt Bevin just lost. So for a red state, a deep red state, to have their Republican governor lose to a Democrat who isn't really even that progressive, what that tells us is that the writing is on the wall. We are on the cusp of a paradigm shift. And the one candidate who I think can truly foster and facilitate that paradigm shift uh, and solidify it is Bernie Sanders. I think that that's obvious. All you have to do is make the case. And Bernie Sanders does a phenomenal job at simplifying politics and making issues, you know, personable and letting people know that he understands the issues that they care about. So I want to go back to a town hall in West Virginia where Bernie Sanders basically converted a Trump supporter in real time. This is a woman who voted for Donald Trump, but he got her to agree with his political philosophy. Right? Who's paying for the Medicaid? Who's paying for the Social Security? Who's paying for the Medicare? Who? Mm -hmm. Thank you. We are. We are. Now, have any of you seen down on streets that it seems as though we have become the silent minority and not the majority? What do you mean by that? How much have we been listened to, really? But who's the, who's the we when you say this? You mean us people? Who people? The people, people who need the Medicare, the people who need the Social Security, who needs the help with the education. Okay, but now here's good good point. Let's let's see if we can go forward on this. I am assuming that you believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that we should not cut Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid. Is that correct or not? Yeah. Okay. I believe it shouldn't be cut. Okay. Do you know who is now working very hard to try to do that? Congress. Republicans in Congress oh, yeah, have a plan nine. under the guise of saving Medicare and saving Social Security, making devastating cuts. That's Republicans are now trying to do. The other point that you made, which is a very, I think you made it, or you both of you have made it actually, is who's going to pay for this stuff? And that is a very fair point. What all of us should know is that over the last 25 years, there has been a massive transfer of wealth in this country from you to the top one-tenth of one percent. In other words, the middle class has shrunk and trillions of dollars have gone to the top one-tenth of one percent. Do you think it's inappropriate to ask those people to stop paying their fair share of taxes so we can adequately fund Medicaid and making public colleges and universities tuition free? Is that an unfair thing to ask? I don't think it's an unfair thing to ask. They, the one percenters, they got rich off us. That's right. So it's time they put back. Okay. All right. That's all I'm saying. Now, look, that's anecdotal evidence. This podcast segment is anecdotal evidence. But Bernie Sanders is the truly pragmatic candidate. Like, for all this talk about pragmatism, it's not going to be a corporate centrist Democrat. That type of individual is just going to demoralize the base and guarantee that Donald Trump gets a second term. If you want to win, you have to have an excited electorate. You have to make sure that your voters are galvanized and young people come out to support you. Because if that does not happen, Trump will get a second term. That's just a fact of reality. So rather than worrying about whether or not, you know, Democrats are moving too far left or whatever... You just have to appeal to the base and make sure that they know that you're no longer going to abandon them and you can actually win. It's not a, a foregone conclusion, but obviously Bernie has the best chance against Donald Trump. And this segment was perfect in demonstrating that, you know, there's no area of the country that is unwinnable. Maybe, right? Maybe some areas are going to be more difficult. Bernie certainly won't win in every single state, but Bernie Sanders is more competitive than Democrats think. And Part of me feels like they know this, but they're just too afraid to admit it because they don't want to move away from corporatism because it's lucrative, right? But they know deep down that progressivism is the way to go. AOC just outraised every other House Democrat, including Nancy Pelosi, all while not picking up the phone one time to call up a wealthy donor. So this really is a paradigm shift that I think we're witnessing. And the way to win is to excite the base. This segment 
really demonstrates that. And Bernie Sanders has proven that he has the correct strategy, which is why we say Bernie would have won. And if he's the nominee, I think he's going to win.